The Kuta Sikh is Khalik Khaf. Sikha of Lech Lecha Bez, Lili Nishmas Reb Yasef Binyamin, Ben Reb Nasha Kaltman, where you're also learning Lizchos, our dear friend, Yasef Shlema Ben Risha, for a Refua Shlema Ukraiva. In this week's Parsha, Hashem promises Avram Schar, reward for, what he, for his service of Hashem. And this leads us to an entire discussion on how does one reconcile the idea of schar and the idea of lishma, serving Hashem for the sake of Hashem? And what's the idea of mitoich shaloy lishma, ba lishma, that from serving Hashem not for the proper reasons, this leads us to serving Hashem for the proper reasons, what does that mean? And as we explore this concept through this sicha, we gain an entirely new understanding in this idea of mitoich shaloy lishma, the Pasik says, Hashem said, Avram, don't be afraid. I will protect you. I will be your protector. Your reward is very great. Is Rashi Mefarish? Rashi explains as Avram at Merigat. Avram was afraid. Since Avram experienced a miraculous victory over the kings when he went to fight the kings. In this parsha, so Avram was afraid. Maybe I already received reward for all of my righteousness. Hashem tells him, "Altira Avram, Avram, don't be afraid. Don't worry about it." And that which you are concerned about receiving your reward, you still have a lot of schar left. You still have a great amount of reward. Is the chayyim didn't move on? This is not understood. Avra, Avi, this Avram Avinu zoch kivan nitz li ba kumen schar and Avi delishma. Avram Avinu served Hashem not for the reward, but for the sake of Hashem. Blush na Rambam when the red veg in the mailuf and an evid me ava. As the Rambam says, when the Rambam is discussing in Hilchas Tshuva, what does it mean someone who serves Hashem from a place of love? Vasis eisik ba teiru mitzvus says the Rambam he serves. He, he, he occupies himself with Tehru Mitzvahs, not for any ulterior motive in this world, but not to inherit the good, which is the reward that is coming to him. He does what is true because it is true, says the Ramam Azuhi, this is a very lofty quality, and this is the quality of Avram Avinu, who served Hashem solely from a place of love. He loved Hashem, he did what Hashem uh, needed him to do or wanted him to do without any thought of his own personal benefit or reward. So how could you say that Avram, who as we just said served Hashem solely from a place of love, would be afraid that he's not receiving reward. So much so that Hashem has to tell him, don't be afraid, you have a great reward waiting for you. So that's the question. What's Avram's concern? And what is Hashem telling him? And see, Beis the Rebbe is going to say, maybe Avram was not afraid uh, for his reward, but he was afraid what the receiving of the reward or the lack thereof indicates. That maybe the quality of his serving Hashem is reflected in the schar that he doesn't receive. The chayr of Omega can't even though Avram served Hashem entirely for the sake of Hashem, and he wasn't thinking at all about his reward, even the spiritual reward that awaits him in the world to come, nevertheless, if he knows he's not getting reward, rewarded, this would have been an indication as an Aveda is that his Aveda is is not up to par. And the Rebbe actually sees this idea that the schar could serve as an indication of the quality of his work in the wording of the Rambam. The Rambam says that the one who serves Hashem does what is true because it is true. And in the end, the good will comfort because of it.
The meat is the Ramam Uis Nitzam to Bavar and Azeich and Avid Meavah Bakum Tzchar. And with this, the Ramam is telling us not just that uh, someone who serves Hashem with love is going to receive reward, Chachas or Tutnit Sulip Tzchar, even though he's not expecting a reward. The Maika Mashmah, because it's obvious if he served Hashem in the proper way, there's a reward for that. The Oid, thus is the Esafa had Gasha Big Lala. If the Ramam was just telling me that the person receives the reward, then why add the word Big Lala? Just say the Seifa Teva Lavai. The good will come in the end, the reward will come. Nor the fact that the Ramam says the Seifa Teva Lavai and also adds the word Big Lala, nor does it a semen of an Emes Nevid Mayava. The good coming at the end is Big Lala. It's a sign that he was a true. Uh, a servant from a place of love, as Venner Tut Pneshu Emes is Seva Teva Love Begol, because when a person serves Hashem from a place of truth, in the end there is good that comes because of it, and therefore that's how you know that he served Hashem properly, because we saw the good that came in the end. Underfar, going back to Avram Avinu, Zen because the name is Jacob in Schar Beilam Azev. When Hashem, when Avram saw that Hashem is giving him reward in this world, Avram made a gat as beim that the fell in them safe at table of Eglol. Avram was concerned that this might be mean that he's going to lack in the ultimate reward that comes at the end of time. But does the simin shal chisar and ba'avid does which would indicate that his avid wasn't up to par. So that's the Rebbe's suggestion. Maybe what Avram is not worried about his own reward. He's worried about what his lack of reward says about his Avaidah. Says about Adecha God, says the Rebbe, this cannot be. It's very difficult to learn that this is the Bshat. That this is what Avram was concerned about. Because Avram's fear was not about the lack of reward. No, their father was just and Avedis or something this was but rather he was afraid that this indicates that his serving of Hashem was not it was not complete. Then when Hashem tells him Avram, don't be afraid, it should have addressed the primary concern. As on it made Avin, but on Avedis Bishlemin, Hashem should have said, "Don't worry about it, Avram. You, you, your Avedis is complete." Vikayetzibaza or something of that to that effect. Their fun was their pas exact altira gaymar sechar chayar b'meyed. When the fact that I said that Hashem tells him, "Don't be afraid. Your reward is great." Neither money the cloud against an Avedis without mentioning the quality of his Avedis. Is muchach. It, this is, makes it clear as the inyan schar do is not al simen of an That the fact that, I've, that Hashem mentions the schar is not about what it tells about something else. Nor al tan inyan farzich. It this itself was the problem. Avram was concerned about his schar. And therefore, Hashem has to tell him, don't worry about it. You have a great amount of reward. So this brings back our original question. How is it possible that Avram was an Eved Miyava who served Hashem from a place of love without any concern about his personal benefit should all of a sudden be reward, be, be, be concerned about his schar? And the Eved has to tell him, don't worry about it. Schar chahar In Sif Gimel, the Rebbe is going to introduce a story from the Zohar. And most of the Sikha, from this point and on, is going to explore the pshat, the meaning, the understanding of the story, which is going to take us on this journey into the Shalai Lishma and Lishma. And at the end of the Sikha, we're going to come back to Avram Avinu to understand what was bothering Avram and what Hashem told him. We'll understand this by first introducing a story that seemingly is not understood to us. The story is brought in the Zayar in our parsha, the Kesher to the Pasik, with regards to the Pasik, which we just quoted about Avram, where Hashem tells Avram, Your reward is great. The Zayar is not provided as the Rav is Eisik, but Teder the Zayar there is explaining that someone who occupies himself with Teder Yavi le'Eirech Yamin ba'Almad Asi is given eternal life in the world to come. The Yavi le'Eishev Chavad ba'Almadain and is given wealth and honor in this world. Umehemshach has a bring to them Sipur, and as a follow up to that, the the Zayar brings the following story. The Baba Tamal Machas given. The Baba once made an announcement, once proclaimed. As Dervas will Ashiris and Dervas will Urcha the Chaya be Alma Daasi that he who wants wealth or he who wants eternal life in the world to come so Kumen and learn and Teder so come and learn Teder is to be Kumen Ravak Echad so one bachelor one unmarried person came to him and gesagt but inna lemili beiraisich vilharevin and Teder 
I want to toil in Teda, Kedei Shei Yili Usra Ashirus. So that way I should have wealth. When the Baba of the Baskin given, the Baba agreed. The Baba of him gifragd via race, the Baba asked him what his name is. Now the Ganford Yoisi, he said his name is Yoisi. But the Baba gives Akhil Tamidu, so the Baba said to his disciples, the Yikrun lay Rabbi Yaisi, Mari, Mari, the Usra of Yikra. As his only roof in Rabbi Yaisi, Bala Yeshiva Achavit. They should call him from now on Rabbi Yaisi, the master of wealth and honor. When he's doing it in the Meshach's man, he's a basic common sort of Abu and Gefrakt, on the Usra, who's the Ashir, some time passed. And he didn't see the wealth coming in. So Rabbi Yaisi goes to the Baba and he says, Where's the wealth? Where's the money? Omer the Baba said, Baba says, Shmami, no, from this I can deduce. The Lav Lashem Shemaim Kavid. That he was not asking, he was not learning Lashem Shemaim for the sake of heaven. And the Zayar indicates over there that Rabbi Yaisi wanted to daven, that this Talmud should. Pass away. This Talmud should 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 die because he was occupying himself in Tater for the wrong reasons. Shomachad call us. Oh, but he heard a voice, a basket, a voice from heaven. To have Omar that was saying, "Loi tanche, do not punish him." The Gavra Rabbi because he's going to be a great person, a great man. At the Rabbi Gazog said, "Rabbi Yisi." So the Rabbi listened to the voice, and instead he said to Rabbi Yisi, "As a man says, I learn, and he should continue to learn." But no, you even the chutra, and I'll take care of it. I will give you wealth. And the Zayar did so. Later, the Zayar continues. As the Rabbi Zikum and Anoshe was at the Zayar, he went to learn in Teira. That a wealthy man who had not had the merit of learning Teira came to Rabbi Abba. And during the battle, Nazim says, "I learn Teira with Chusay." But no, you even the chutra. And and he asked the Baba that someone should learn in his merit, and he will give him well. He will pay for it. Will give him wealth. Oh, the Baba gives out to Rabbi Yaisi as well as a learning Teira. The Baba said to Rabbi Yaisi that he should learn Teira. And the Rashi with him gave an Oisher, and this rich man will give him wealth. Yoiv lehahu kasa the pos, and at the gave an Rabbi Yaisi na kois from Gingold. So to start it off. Reb, Reb, uh, the, this which man gives Rabbi Yaisi a goblet made out of gold. Rabbi in the Fabrengen, he says the word, teaches the word pause to mean gin gold, and says that when he was in Cheder, his Malamid uh, 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 translated the word pause to mean gin gold. So he asked him, what is gin gold? So the Malamid told him that gin gold, the Tzmamid told him that when he gets older, he'll understand. And the Rebbe says that he still doesn't know exactly what Gingold is, and he realizes now that the Malama didn't either know what what Gingold is. But in in the English for the word pause, so it says fine gold. So it was a, a, a golden goblet, maybe a, a fancier gold, a more precious gold. Yosef Rabbi Yosi v'lo beiraisis. Rabbi Yosi would sit and study and toil in Teira v'hu barnas v'yayv liutra, and this individual would would give him money. Time passed, and Rabbi Yaisi came to realize the value, the preciousness of Teda. And he was crying about the fact that he gave up his 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 merits of learning Teda for money. As Rabbi does get when Rabbi heard Rabbi Yaisi crying about this, Omar he said. Now I can understand that it was done for the sake of heaven. So he called the rich man. He told him, take the money. Give the money to poor people and to, and to orphans. And I, Rav Abba, will give you an extra portion in, in, in Torah. So as part of this new arrangement where the where the uh, where Rabbi Yaisi and this Gvir were parting ways, Rabbi Yaisi gave him back, returned to him this golden goblet. Until today, they don't stop referring to him as Ben Pazi. Until today, he's called Rabbi Yaisi Ben Pazi because of the golden goblet that he had originally been given. 
in the Mesipah Zanifan and Kamva Kamat Mias, the story raises a number of questions. Umayhen amongst them as follows. Aleph, Farvas of the Baba give out minus and Abyas in the Farvas that give out learn Terish Lishma. Why would Rabbi Yasi want why would Rabbi Abba want to punish Rabbi Yasi for learning Shalai Lishma? So the Khadin Mefurish is a very clear din, and according to some opinions, Reb Abba himself is the one who teaches this din. That a person should always continue to engage in Torah, even if it's Lishma, even if it's not for the right reasons, even not not for the sake of 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 heaven. Because from the learning for the wrong reasons, you come to learning for the right reasons. So so. It, 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 clearly, the Torah tells us to learn Shalei Lishma. Litmi is not gresser. Reb Abba Leina Dachmach is given man de boy utra yesiv yistadul by Reb Abba is the one who said, who made the announcement. Whoever wants wealth should should, should come and learn Torah. When Reb Yesi min chatchile gekumen led in Torah kadesh yiyel utra, and Reb Yesi came specifically for this reason, so that way he should have money. Because Reb Abba took his dogs and told him. Reb Abba knew this. He accepted it, and he even told his students. That they should refer to him as the master of wealth and honor. What changed when he comes and says to Reb Abba, where is the money? Something changed about it to the point that Reb Abba wants to punish him with the death penalty. That's our first question. What's so terrible about learning Shalai Lishma? From the fact that Rabbi Abba didn't just say to the rich person from this point and on, you should stop giving Rabbi Yesi the money because Rabbi Yesi wants to learn Lishma. No, Rabbi Yesi had umgekert them kasa the pause. Rabbi Yesi returned the golden goblet. Was erad bakum and glach vemot gimach them apach, which he received right when the arrangement was made. Is mashma as der mito te givolt mevatos and them ganzen apach with the mafreya. It implies that Rabbi Yesi wanted to renege on the entire agreement retroactively. Including the merits that he had already given to the to the rich person for the Torah that he already learned. The schus of the previously learned Torah was already acquired by the by the rich person. How can he now take it away? How can he re, how can he go back to the beginning? It seems, says the Rebbe, from the fact that he was giving back the 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 goblet, which was the symbol of the original arrangement that he wanted to go back to before he ever made the arrangement. Says the Rebbe, from that point until now, how could he go back on that? Give me the third question. At the end of the Zayar, once we were told that Rabbi Yesi regretted the fact that he was learning Torah for for an, an, an ulterior motive for money, and we're telling you that for now on we're calling him Ben Pazi, at this point we should have been focusing on the Mila of Rabbi Yesi and the greatness of Rabbi Yesi, that, that he realized his mistake. If we start calling him now Ben Pazi, it's going to remind him that initially he was learning for the wrong reasons. He was learning for the for the gold. Especially since the din is that when some when someone did something he shouldn't do and then does tshuva, we're not supposed to remind him of his previous deeds. So why would we rename him Ben Pazi, constantly reminding him of? That once upon a time he was learning Shalai Lishma. Rebbe has additional nuances, details in the story that are a question. Umayam Aleph. And amongst them are as follows. Their baskil is Gavrid Abalevi. Via Zayas does a time of late The baskil, the voice from heaven, came and said, Don't punish him, because he's going to be a great man. How is that a reason for not being punished? If learning Shleilishma is prohibited and therefore he is worthy of a punishment, is vas helped us vas but also the zana gaver So how does what is it? How does the fact that in the future he will one day be a great person? How does it change the fact that right now what he's doing is wrong? Could we say that because one day he's going to be a great person that now he could do something that is not allowed? 
And if he's not deserving of a punish, because there is a value in learning Torah even if it's not for the sake of heaven. Then we don't need the reason that he's going to be a great person. The Baskel should have said, don't punish him because he's, at least he's learning, even though it's Shalei Lishma. And Chazal tell us that a person should learn Shalei Lishma because we take Shalei Lishma Balishma, because it leads to the right type of learning. So that's our first question. What was the Baskel's uh, bargaining chip for Rabbi Yaisi? He's going to be a great person. What is the relevance of the detail brought in the Zoyar that when Rabbi Yaisi came to Rabbi Abba at the time he was not married? Why is that detail relevant to the story? So when Sivav the Rebbe is going to give a suggestion to understand what happened here and the Rebbe will immediately refute that suggestion. Seemingly, we can explain Rebbe's conduct. Chazal tell us why is it that a person should occupy himself with teira or mitzvahs, even if it's not for the right reasons? Because from starting out with, with with doing it for the wrong reasons, you'll ultimately do it for the right reasons. It's not just because the, 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 the deed, the act is, is, is the most important and therefore the act of learning is more important than the intent. In other words, you have every time you do a mitzvah, you have the act of the mitzvah. You, you take a lul of an esrig and you shake the lul of an esrig, make a bracha, and you shake the lul of an esrig in all the, in all the directions. And then there's the kavana, the intent. Why am I doing this? So the, the rule is amaisa uikir, that even if a person doesn't have the right intent, the, the act of doing the mitzvah is more important. as the Alter Rebbe brings in Hilchas Talmud the mitzvah was done properly. Just in his thought, it wasn't the same mitzvah. So you could say, why, why should a person learn Shalei Lishma? At least he's learning. The mitzvah is to learn. The act of learning is... But it says, say Chazal, they don't say, because I'm Isa Oyeker. Chazal say, Mitoich Shalei Lishma Ba Lishma. Nor Val Sov Sov Brentis to Lishma. Why should a person learn Shalei Lishma? Because it will lead to learning Lishma. But please, they came So according to this, we can explain reaction. When he saw that Rav Abba is demanding the wealth, and with this intensity, so Rav Abba figured that if a person is so intent on the money, it's a shalei lishma that won't lead to a lishma. When you see a person learning and he has uh, 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 ulterior motives, you could say, okay, now there's ulterior motives, but ultimately he'll learn for the right reason. But if he's coming to the day scene, he's saying, where's my money? Clearly, the, the goal is the money. Once he gets the money, he's going to stop learning. So clearly, there is a set, there, there, this is not going to lead to a lishma. And therefore, Baba said, there, there, there's no value in this. Aber eich das is nit maspik. But this is not a sufficient explanation. Even if it's true that a person that want, that demands the money, we say don't learn with him because it's not. There's no concept of But it still doesn't explain why one would think of punishing him and with the punishment of death. It's true that his learning has an ulterior motive, and maybe even he shouldn't be learning. But to say that he that he deserves the death penalty for this is, is not understood. So when Sif Zayi and the Rebbe begins the beer in this story, and in order to to, be, to begin the beer, the beer is going to uh, uh, build step after step as we're going to build a building or brick after brick, until we'll have an entire, under, entire understanding of this story. But the first and foremost, we want to, the Rebbe is going to introduce, what is pshat when a person learns for the sake of a reward? So the Rebbe says like this, In the from Lenin Tehidus, the Bikolos Chalas and Fernandes Feifanim, there are two different types of, a, 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 of, of, of learning for the reward that comes for it. Aleph, but let him to leave the Meschar was to the Abish to get for key mitzvah Talmud Torah. 
Number one, we're learning for the reward that the Abishter gives for fulfilling the mitzvah of learning Torah. And as the Alta Rebbe says in Hilchas Talmud Torah, Shalemid is learning. The Kabo Pras Ba'il about to receive a reward, a prize in the world to come. Even in this world, the, the Pasuk says, Those who lean to the right, have Eirech Yamim, those who lean to the left, have Eishe V'chavit. So, he, so this person is someone who wants not necessarily the spiritual, he's a Masme'ilim, he's on the left, which means to say he wants the more material reward. Hanitin min but where is it coming from? From heaven. So he's talking, learning for the reward, but he's hoping for the reward to come from heaven. That's one oifen. Bays another way, the person is demanding things in this world. He's charging, or at least he's asking people, you want me to learn, refer to me as Rebbe. Or to have a livelihood from teaching or from answering shilas, answering halachic questions. But thus is at the what they're mentioned. This is a benefit that the person is taking for, for his learning. A person could say, I want, I'm learning Torah and I hope Hashem repays me. That's one level. The second level is a person says, you want me to learn Torah? I'm going to go to Kailal, but you have to pay my, you have to pay my bills. Or more than that. If a person says, I'll take this job as, as, as being a Rav, but you have to honor me for it. So the person is demanding from other people within his world for these, uh, uh, for, for these rewards. He's charging for it. In Dem Oifen, the second way where the person is Charging or demanding honor is not just that he's learning that it's for the sake of a reward. That a should not use teira as a crown to make yourself great or as an axe with which to receive your parnasa. So this way actually is a prohibited way of learning. Says Narvas Misha Ela Yira Shamayim Ledavar. If a person doesn't have the proper fear of heaven to learn Torah for the right reasons, he's only doing it to make himself great or for his parnasa. It's preferable that he should learn Torah even in this way. Then that he should totally remove himself from learning Torah. Because ultimately this will lead to something better. In other words, to not learn is even worse. So we say that it's better you should learn Torah, but it's not. But but, but it, it, there is a prohibition that latches on to this type of learning because you're using the Torah for personal gains. So there's the first if a person is expecting reward from Hashem. This is taka sheloy lishma, but it's not aser because you're doing the right thing and you're hoping Hashem is going to repay you. But when you're using the Torah as a way of becoming great, and you're demanding it, you're requiring it from the people around you, either to give you covet or to give you money, this is using the Torah, which is us. Now that we understand that there is this lower level, so to speak, in serving us, in learning Torah, we'll understand something, that the a, 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 a nuance in the Alter Rebbe Shulchan Aruch. Where the Alter Rebbe is listing various different forms of learning Torah. First, he mentions the idea of of expecting something to come from Hashem, which is what we just quoted in the previous in the end of the previous page. And over there, he mentions both Oishar and Kavod, which we're hoping, which the person hopes that it will come from Hashem. But then the sec when they talk about the second category, as where, 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 where the person is demanding this from people around him. He mentions the honor and the greatness of the person wanting to be, 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 be called a Rebbe or that he should have a, a be a Rosh Hashiva. But he doesn't mention wealth. 
So in other words, the Alter Rebbe says, what a person could hope to receive from Shamayim a schar, either Eirech uh, Yomim in Eilam Abba, or Oisher V'chavoyd, Oisher and Kavoyd in this world. Or a person could require the people around him to give him Kavoyd. And here the Alter Rebbe doesn't mention Oisher. Why? But now that we said previously that there is actually a prohibition, there is a, a, an iser for a person to use taita, so we can under, explain why the Alter Rebbe omits the Oisher. The fact that we find that people charge for teaching or for learning, that, we, 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 that there is a hetter, there is a, a permissibility to, for a person to learn taita and use it as a as a tool for parnasa is blazedly his parnas is only if it's for his livelihood. Because a person is obligated to provide a livelihood for his wife and his family, then it's so therefore the Torah said, "Listen, he could have been he could have been uh, uh, doing a different job. The only way he'll learn Torah is if there'll be at least enough money to be able to." To uh, provide for his wife and kids. So therefore there is a hatter when it comes to Parnassa. Then as Kumta Bertsunutsun Divre Taira Bhtez of the Fun Krigan Ashiris, but if he wants more money than just what he needs for Parnassa, he wants uh, he wants wealth. But in as mentions only Reich Machen, if I was learning Taylor, not that he's hoping for Hashem to make him wealthy, but he's demanding that other people should make him wealthy. Of them, they taught that now there's no permissibility to say, oh, he needs it for Parnassa. He doesn't need it for Parnassa, he's doing it for the Ashiras, for wealth, which is much more than Parnassa. That's why the Alter Rebbe skips the word Aisher, because because you're not allowed to, 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 to learn Torah for the sake of Oisher. For a Parnassah, yes, but Oisher not. So what have we established over here? We've established that there's two types of, of Shalai Lishma. One, you're expecting it to come from Shamayim. And two, you're demanding it from the people around you. And in that itself, there are two types. There is, if a person is demanding Parnassah, then it's, it, 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 there is a heter. It is permitted, but if a person is demanding Ashiros, then it's us. In other words, there's a problem. A person comes and says, I want, he wants to charge someone for him, for his learning Torah and not charging him a few dollars just to be able to provide for his family, but he's charging him a lot of money, money that would make him rich. That is an Isser of using the Torah as a tool for your own personal gain, which is not allowed. And according to this, we can understand what happened here with Rebaba, what, 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 what Rebaba did at first, and then how he responded after Rebbe Yesi demanded, demanded the money. When Rebaba made this proclamation that he who wants wealth should come and learn Torah, he was referring to this wealth that comes from Shemaim, it's like a Shalei Lishma. But nevertheless, it is a permitted form of Shalei Lishma. Una had gerechent, and Rabbi Yesi believed, as Azah Ashiris, sorry, Rabbi Abba believed, as Azah Ashiris, that Eich Rabbi Yesi gehat in Zinin, that this is what Rabbi Yesi intended. Then Rabbi Yesi gezogt, bo inno lemili beiraisek deishi il yutro, and he said, I want to learn Torah in order to have wealth. He was hoping for this scharf min ha-shamayim. Rabbi Abba thought that Rabbi Yesi wanted the reward from heaven. Oh, but Rabbi Yesi spent a kumim et atviyot to Rabbi Abba on who utre. But when Rabbi Yesi came to Rabbi Abba and demanded, "Where is the money?" How did they meet? Megala given kavanasim lechatchila as Rabbi Abba betim bezarg mitashiris. Here he revealed his initial intent was that the Abba should provide him with money. The farut in Rabbi Abba gave out minus zayin, and for this Rabbi Abba wanted to punish him. We bow to zayin learning his nits tam shalei lishma. Nor beifin as a zich mishtamish bekisda shaltera, because he's learning not just shalei lishma, hoping to be rewarded by Hashem, but he is demanding money from Rabbi Abba, meaning to say he's using the crown of Torah ter- for his own personal gain. But the reinish is nekar mina elam, which the punishment for this is that he should be removed from the world. When Rabbi Abba, when Rabbi Abba thought that he that he wanted he, he, that he was shalei lishma, he said fine. Hashem, Hashem, uh, hopefully Hashem will give you schar. When he came to Rabbi Yossi, when he came to Rabbi Abba and he said, where's the money? And Rabbi Abba realized that he was learning, he was using the Torah as a, as a tool for his personal gain. 
This the Baba said uh, we, ha- we have to daven that he should be nekar and oilam, he should be removed from the world because that's what the halacha is. That uh, someone who's mishtamas bekisas or teder, someone who uses the crown of teder for their personal gain, has to be removed from the world. V'yumtik pozevah sezeh v'dayik sebediyas and v'dayisi is demol given adavok, and now he makes. All the more sense the fact that the Zayar mentions the fact that Abyasi was single and he was not married. Then Rivel given about Mispache is Malam de la Kafskus as a Shiris Darfak de la Kayim, Shade of Susa la Yigra. Were he to be married, then Abidabu could have been Malam and Schus that he needs the money to fulfill his marital obligations of providing food and shelter to his, to his family. But that's the Mamatic Van Canal, which, as we said earlier, was made permissible for a person to learn Torah and, 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 and charge just enough to be able to provide for his family. But since he was not married, this shows that what he wanted was wealth. One of them is nitoki at the canal, and to, to demand wealth for your learning, there's no there's no hetter, there's no permissibility. Never, Rabbi said this is not allowed to the point that the Rabbi wanted a daven that he should be nakar min oilam, he should be removed from the world. So now, based on this concept that there is different types of shaleli shma, and that Yaisi ended up in the worst one, where one that he was not married. And therefore, and he was not hoping for something from Hashem, but he was demanding from Rabbi Abba to give him Oisher, Ashirus, to give him wealth. We understand where Rabbi Yaisi went wrong. The problem with this understanding is that it makes it very difficult for us to appreciate what the Baskil is saying. Oh, he's going to be a great person. Does the fact that one day he's going to be a great man give him permission to currently, in the present, use the Torah as a tool to become wealthy? How does the Baskil save him? Seemingly, the Baba has a serious issue on with Rabbi Yaisi. He, he, he went down the wrong path here. And how is it possible? So, so how, how does the Baskel's uh, defense work on someone who's, who's in the present using the Torah for the wrong reasons? So in Sif Tess, the Rabbi is going to introduce a new Pirish in the words, Mitoich Shaloi Lishma Balishma. Until now, we understood that it meant that when you when you learn for shaloi lishma, not for the sake of shamayim. Ultimately, balishma. He ultimately, over time, eventually, he will come to appreciate the Torah and learn lishma, as actually happened in the case of Rabbi Yaisi. In the end, the Rebbe is going to learn a new pshat in mitoich shaloi lishma, mitoich from the word pnimius. Pnimius meaning the essence, the inside. That within. The, the intent, the desire for a, 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 whatever the ulterior motive might be, within that lies a deeper uh, intent, a deeper desire, which is Lishma. And the Rebbe is first going to explain it on a basic level in Sif Tess, and then in Sif Yud, the Rebbe is going to explain it on an even deeper level, and ultimately that will lead us to understand what happened here between Reb Abba and Reb Yosef. This will be understood by first understanding what is the statement of Chazal mean that a person should always occupy himself with learning Torah even for the wrong reasons because from learning for the wrong reasons it will come, it will bring him to the right reasons. Ados meant that this means not that over time he will gain, he will reach the level of learning Lishma. Nor as shein itzt is in their toich v'ran dikavano lishma, but already now, when the person is learning shaloi lishma, within that there is a kavano, there is an intent for the right reasons, for the sake of heaven. Their toich from them loy lishma is lishma. The inside of the loy lishma is lishma. What does this mean? So Rebbe explains in the toich when yad eden is vas for a matzav is on zain on the inside of every single yid in what situ- whatever situation he might be is faran the meratzen vekav the ratzen vekavanot to mekayim and davishin ratzen there is a desire there is an intent to fulfill the will of Hashem kipsak din rama yadua as we find a very well known psak ruling of the Rambam in refer in, in, in reference to the fact that if a person uh, uh, it does not want to write a get after Bezdin required him to do so. 
We coerce him until he admits that he really wants it. So the Ram says, as euch der Eid was besten muss im Kaifer sein zum Kaim sein, sagt ihn hat er das gegeben und get. That even a Jew that's on such a low level that he needs to be coerced to fulfill the ruling of the Bezdin, the ruling of Torah, that he should give his wife a get, a divorce. Hotter bishas meise, dem rotzen lasses kalamitzvahs. In that very moment, when he's going up against the Bezdin, against Torah, on the inside, he does have the desire at that same time to do all the mitzvahs. The Yitzhah you should talk for you, and it's only that this Yitzhah Hara is overpowering him. Which is why halachically the coercion of Bezdin works. Even though when a get is given, it has to be done willingly. Uh, uh, in, uh, the, uh, the husband has to, be, has to want to give it. So how can you coerce him and say that it's a kosher get? Because we coerce, coerce him until he says, I want. The coercion only reveals his true inner desire to do the will of Hashem. So the Ramam is telling us something halachically that is a very, very powerful message. That even when a person is in a place in a state of mind that he's going against Torah, on a deeper level, he really truly wants to do the right thing. And therefore, even if the person is doing is, is learning Shalai Lishma, on a deeper level, he really wants to do the right thing. He's learning Lishma. He's learning for the, really to fulfill the will of Hashem and for no other reason. So that's the foundation of this new of this new explanation. On the inside of the shalei lishma, there's a lishma. Every yid has a has a yitz a toiv. Every yid has a neshama, and therefore, even while learning shalei lishma, his real desire, the inner desire, is to learn for the sake of Hashem. In order to understand this, we're going to have to introduce now a point, which is that not always. Do we look at the toich in a good way? There are certain types of ulterior motives that we don't say, oh, in this case, we don't always say that. There are certain exceptions where we don't say that inside the shalei lishma, there's a lishma. And the cheda, if you're looking at the person's neshama, why would it matter what his ulterior motive is or what his exterior motive is? Why, why would we choose Sometimes to not look at the toich. Let's see this inside. Afal begins that min as nitn yadn fal rechem and zich mitem toich shel adam. We're going to see as the example that Rebbe is about to bring that not always do we look at the toich. Not always do we look at the inner desire. Sometimes we say what he's doing is wrong. Period. When we get fitted in taste system chiluk, we find the taste system brachas that differentiates. When do we say that a person who learns Torah, the person is allowed to learn Shalai Lishma, not for the sake of, of, of heaven, is when his ulterior motive is he wants to be honored. So it's Taka Shalai Lishma, but we say, But not when he's learning to compete with or to. Uh, or to win over his friends, his colleagues. If that's the case, the Gemara in Baruch says, a person that learns the counter to prove his friends wrong, that kind of learning is, it's, it's so bad, it's preferable that he was never even created in the first place. Even though even the person that's learning the counter also has a neshama on, 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 on the inside wants to really truly do what Hashem wants. So this raises a question. It's true that when you're learning for the sake of, of competing or, or winning over your colleagues, it's much worse than learning just for the sake of the honor. It's only a kavana. It's only a, 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 an intent for the wrong reason. But the, 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 the learning itself is, is a good learning. And on the inside, he has, he has, he must have the, the right desire. And the Rebbe explains, what, what, what do you mean over here? Nit mervi a kavana. 
So the Rebbe says in the brackets, says nit gleich to einim as is einim mekayim ashalem, and you can't compare this to someone who who. who doesn't fulfill that which he learns. But Ladas Kama Tara and Lan Tara with certain opinions say he shouldn't learn Tara. If a person learns and doesn't fulfill that which he learns, then there's a problem with the very learning. But the whole purpose of the wisdom of Tara is to bring to good deeds. Under five and learn to lay lasses, and therefore, but if he's learning not for the sake of fulfilling. Felt nitner in kavanas alimud. Not just lacking in the intent that he has the wrong intent. Then in the etzam tachas alimud. In the very learning itself, there's a lack. You can't you can't learn properly if you have no plan, no intent to actually fulfill that which you're learning because you're not connecting. You're not connect. You're not really truly connecting to the learning because you have no plan to do anything. So. If a person is learning shalei uh, uh, amenas lasses not to fulfill, then some say don't learn Torah. But it's better not to learn. But in this case, he's learning the counter. At least he's learning. What his intent is is a bad intent. But at least he's learning. And as we said before, b'toychay on the inside, he wants to do it lishma. Farvazal di kavana from the counter. So the Rebbe concludes his question: Why would this intent, the intent to 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 uh, to uh, win over his friends or to compete with his friends? How does that intent make such a fundamental difference in his learning? Because to the point that the Gemara in Bracha says it's preferable that he was not even that he wouldn't have been created. So just to understand where we're holding, we introduce the concept of mitoich shalei lishma. Then inside of the the uh, inside of the person who is learning shalei lishma, there is really a desire to learn lishma. And then we said, however, there are certain types of desa- of shalei lishmas that we don't say abolishma. Uh, we don't look at the toich. We say neyach leishle nivra. It's better he was he wasn't created. And the question is why? Why would there be certain things, certain times, when we look at the toich and say, ah, inside of the shalei lishma there's a lishma, and therefore a person should learn Torah, even if it's shalei lishma. And certain times we say, no, we don't look at the toich. We say it's better that he doesn't learn. It might even be better that he wasn't created. So in Sif Yud, the Rebbe is going to take us to a deeper understanding of what does it mean inside the shalei lishma there's a lishma mitoich. What does that mean? When we understand that, we'll understand why that why there is a difference between the two types of shalei lishma. We will also understand the story of Rabbi Abba, and ultimately this will bring us back to the story of Avraham Avinu. Shleimah Rabbi Yehuda, the pirushim mitech shalei lishma ba lishma is nit nor as as in them toich von aiden is from the kavanah lishma. Doesn't just mean that inside the yid there is a neshama, there is something there, there that, that that has all the right uh, intentions. Not as the toich from them shelo lishma gufa is lishma, but the inner uh, uh, content, the inner uh, message, the inner idea of the shelo lishma, the very thing that he uh, that that he wants, that is shelo lishma. Within that lies a lishma. Just to to to. to to a, a, a spoiler alert, just to give away what we're going to say, but I want you to understand where we're going here. When the person say a person is learning Torah for the money, it, that money itself, which you would, which on the on the surface is totally selfish, is really in that money itself lies a lishma, lies something that's the same shemaim, as the Rebbe will explain. Not just inside the person is there a neshama that ultimately wants to do everything for the right reasons. Even in the desire of the person for the wrong reason, in that wrong reason lies something that is the right reason. And the Rebbe explains. Das was Teiru Mitzvahs bringi mitzichinyon ischar. The fact that Teiru Mitzvahs come with reward. Saitiv gasmi saitiv rochni. Whether it's material wealth, or material good, whether it's spiritual good. Unit nos charvas that Eibus toy gitpeif and shol segula. Not just reward that the Eibus gives, sort of as a prize. 
that things that are not the, the, where the reward is not directly connected to the action of the person. Even those things that are automatic, that are a natural outcome, a natural result of the person's learning Torah or doing mitzvahs. For example, the fact that somebody is being honored for being very knowledgeable or being a Rosh Hashiva. So it's a natural thing. If a person knows how to learn, and can teach well, and can answer Shilas, etc., etc., people will respect him. So even though, so regardless of what the reward is, even if the reward is intrinsically linked to the act of the person, is neat, is not a contradicting contradiction to serving Hashem Lishma. No, it's the fact that when a person learns Torah or does a mitzvah, there is a reward for it, whether it's Megasmius, or whether Ruchnius, whether it's an automatic outcome or is something that the Yabishta gives as a special reward in any way it's not a steer to Lishma because the person's intent could be I'm learning for the right reasons even though I know there's gonna be a schar but if my intent is for the sake of Hashem then the reward is not a steer. This is a very important foundation. Just because there's going to be a reward or just because there is a reward does not change the fact that the person's intent could be Lishma. But the Rebbe takes it now to the next level, the We can say even more than that. But that if the person is taka serving Hashem Lishma for the sake of heaven, the reward itself becomes part of his service of Hashem. Warum? The Rebbe is saying, "If only Shmuel bad dayt as I'm learning un un kiyum um, a mitzvah, tracht men in ganz and nidveg and zich and vegan the vegan and tayelas." What does it mean? Lishma. Lishma ultimately means that when a person is learning or doing a mitzvah, he's not thinking at all about himself or about his own personal gain. Nor men tut in ganz and undurchuis when nevis nus vegan. We are doing this entirely and completely for the sake of Hashem. Is al derech zebayim oich ben egedim schar a tere mitzvahs. So the same idea could be employed when you're talking about the reward for his learning Torah and his doing mitzvahs. For example, if a person receives wealth or honor for learning Torah or doing mitzvahs, he doesn't feel that he is gaining importance or greatness. That he, that he uh, 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 gained uh, a wealth or honor. The Ayyad Hashem Lishma, the one who serves Hashem Lishma, feels when he sees he's getting wealthy, he's becoming wealthy, or he sees he's getting covered, he says, This is increasing the honor of heaven in the world. Other people will see that when you learn Torah and you do mitzvahs, Hashem gives you, you get, in whatever way it is, you get wealth, you get honor. This will encourage people to learn Torah. The Rebbe is going to use an example from Avram Avinu. And then we'll go back to our discussion. As it says that Avram was told by Hashem, I will make your name great. Is your doer and them the Shaila? The Mephoshim asked this question. And the question is brought down in Chsidis. Avram gizuch Godless. Hashem tells Avram, you're going to be, I'm, I'm going to make your name great. Was Avram looking for greatness? Avram was entirely bottled, totally was uh, what, what did not consider himself to be of any of any importance. He said, I am dust and ash. So what is Hashem telling him? Well, I'll make your name great. Why would that be a, a, a gain or a reward for Avram Avinu? He's ain't from the beauty of As Ad Rabbi and his son, one of the explanations given for this is that this question answers itself. Because Avram was in a state of, of total bittle. His existence wasn't important to himself. Was significant to himself. He's b'meila der Shem nit zayin Shem. So when Hashem says to him, "I'm going to make your name great," it's not the name of Avram. Avram is nothing. Nor from the Mumish Asani. It's referring to the name. Avram's name is the name of the craftsman that created him. Shem Shemaim, the name of Hashem. Das was Shimcha misgad lo The fact that Avram's name becomes great in the world, shaft by him nit derhergis from saying gedula does not create by him a feeling of his own greatness. Nor blows gad gedula Shem Shemayim. It 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 increases the greatness of the name of Hashem. Vagad lo shmecha a person on the level of Avram Avinu who is total total who is in a state of total bittul when you when uh, when Avram is made to be great. This makes Hashem great. Similarly, when a person is, receives, a person who's learning the Shema, and he receives schar, the schar itself is, is a tool 
to increase the Kavit Shamayim. So that's uh, uh, what it means when the Rebbe says that teiru, that the schar is not a steer to, 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 to learning the Shema. Other Rebbe, the schar could be used could be used in, to, to serve Hashem Lishma. So up until here, we, we would see, we would look at this as if it's two separate people. You have a person that learns for Ashiris or for Kavid. It's Shalei Lishma. He wants his own Kavid. He wants his own Ashiris. And then you have a person that learns Lishma in the Aisher V'Chavid. He sees a way to increase Kavid Shemaim. In Sifir Dalav, the Rebbe is going to say, that these two attitudes exist within the same person. As the Teich from Lei Lishma, Gufa is Lishma. That this, what, this is how we're going to explain this statement. That in the Shalei Lishma, in the desire for Aisha V'Chavayt, for example, in their lies of Lishma, those of us that he feels as Im Vils V'Chavayt V'Ashiris V'Kehitz B'Zeh, the fact that he feels that he wants wealth and honor, is thus Nar Mitzad Aguf. That's his body. He, the, the, the physical aspect of him wants to learn in order to receive money or honor. Over in them is Ferran HaToich. Inside this desire, there is also a deeper desire. The Ratzim for the Neshama. The desire of the Neshama. Who wants these same rewards, but for a, de- a deeper, more Ruchnistic reason. He wants to increase the COVID, the, the honor of Teira, and the honor of Hashem. By seeing in an open way that when you learn Teira, when you do mitzvahs, you get blessed, and this will this will cause people to want to learn Torah to do mitzvahs. Al derech pirush of Hashem tiv ala posik reivim gam tzmeim nafshim behem tisatov. As the Bal Shem tiv uh, explained uh, on this posik, they are hungry, they are thirsty, their soul within them desires. As their hunger endures from them guf to advar meichel umashka that when the body feels a pang of hunger or thirst to food or drink. It stems from the fact that the soul has a desire. The soul wants to elevate the sparks of holiness that are in this food or drink. And therefore the goof feels hungry. That's what the Baal explains. When the goof feels hungry, it's because the nefesh has a hunger, a desire to the spark of holiness inside that piece of food. Similarly, when the person has a desire for Ashiris or for, for COVID from learning Taita, it's because the Nishama wants it for, uh, to use that, that Oisha V'chavid to make a greater COVID Shamayim or a COVID Taita. So that is ultimately the Taich. The meaning of mitoich shalei lishma ba lishma that even with, that within the person who is learning shalei lishma and within his desire he wants money he wants covet because he wants to because there is a deeper desire within to use that money and that covet for the covet shemayim or covet atayda. If you remember, we we started we got here by asking the question. Why is it that if a person is learning le canter, which is to uh, to compete or to argue with his colleagues, then we don't say we say But now we understand. And you can only say this concept of the, that within the Shalilishma there's a Lishma if you can actually find something positive. If, for example, it's a neutral thing, he wants money, he wants COVID, so then you could say within that there is a way to elevate that. And therefore, But if someone is learning the Kanter, he's learning, he's learning to fight. So that, that's the opposite of. Akidus Hashem, hot it came sat chiyuvi. Learning the cantor has no has no uh, a positive uh, uh, aspect to it. Kam and Yitzchakin has the teich from them slay lishma is lishma. You can't say that the inside of this slay lishma is lishma because if the whole thing is a negative thing, then you can't find any positive about it. There's you can't say a person is learning in order to fight, but inside what 
what would be the positive outcome of the fight? When, the, when there's Oysher Bechavid, there's a positive angle to it. So you could say that the Guf wants Oysher Bechavid, uh, wealth and honor, but the, the Neshama wants the positive aspect of that Oysher Bechavid. But the Kanter has no positive aspect. So now, if we go back to I guess the beginning of Sif Tess. So we have Tess and Yud and Yudalif. What have we learned? We have learned that Mitoich Shalei Lishma Balishma means that within the desire, the, the ulterior motive that the person has when it comes to learning Torah, there is not just in the, the Toich in the person, but in the, that not, not just that a person has a Neshama and therefore a person wants to serve Hashem, but we, we, the very fact that he wants Oishar V'chavad or whatever Schar he wants, within that Schar, there, he wants to use, the Neshama wants to use it for, uh, for a Lishma, for a good reason. So now we can understand what the Baskel was saying. So where were we holding with the story of Rabbi Yaisi? Rabbi Yaisi said, whoever wants to come, whoever wants money, should, wants wealth, should come learn Torah. He was referring to, to the Zcharim and Hashemayim, which it is Shalei Lishma, but it's not Aser. Then came Rabbi Yaisi to Rabbi Abba and he said, Anu Usra, where, where is my wealth? So Rabbi Yaisi realized that this was the second form of Shalei Lishma, which is, where he's demanding it from other people, which is which is a problem. It's a problem of using the using the the kisra shel teda, the crown of teda, for personal reasons. And he can't say you can't say uh, that it was for for uh, um, uh, for for parnasa, which is which is acceptable because he was a ravak. He wasn't married. Didn't need parnasa. So therefore, Rabbi was upset with him. The question that we, where we were holding was, so then in that case, how is the fact that he's going to be a Gavra Rabba, how is that a defense for the fact that he's learning Torah right now for the wrong reasons? But now that we understand this concept of that when there is a desire, there is always a deeper desire. That is a more is that is a more positive holy thing. So now we can understand what the Baskil is saying. Even though there's a rule that you're not allowed to use Tater to gain wealth. The fact that is not only his fairness, the only perm permissibility is when he needs it for parnasa. He's over. There is another exception. There was Rabim Srichim Lai. If the the multitudes need him, that there's nobody else in the land that is greater in wisdom than him, then then the people are commanded to provide for his needs with honor, and even to make him wealthy, as the expression is, make him great from his brothers, which means to say you take from the brothers, that's talking about the Cain, I believe, the Cain God that you, that you take from his, his brethren and you support him and make him great. The same thing would apply to every great within a generation that there is a chiyuv la'ashrei. There's a chiyuv, there's an obligation to make him wealthy, not just to provide for his needs, but to make him wealthy so that way he could be honored and respected as the leader that he is. So now, so now there's another, there's another hatter over here. There's, there's another, there's, there's another exception to the rule that by a gadol adair, there is a, a permissibility to make him wealthy. Their baskilot megala given. So the baskil was revealing. The fact that Rabbi Yaisi wanted wealth as a reward for his learning. It's because currently, presently, he has incredible strengths that ultimately will be realized when he will become a great man. At that point, there is a, there is a mitzvah to make him wealthy. 
And therefore, Hagama, since I need to stick in matzah, but the givolti ashiris, let the yalas atzmai, even though right now he wanted the ashiris for his own needs, is over in the merots and gufa for under toich vesiba, but in that desire that he has to be wealthy, there is a deeper reason, because his neshama wants to reach a, 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 a level where he's a great man, which at that point, there's going to be a mitzvah to make him wealthy. So just like you say by a regular person who, who is learning is learning for the money or for the covid, you say that within that, he wants to use that money and that covid for L'shem Shamayim for to, to for the sake of heaven. In the case of Rabbi Yaisi, who wanted wealth on the outside, on the surface, he wanted wealth, but on the inside, he wanted that wealth. He wanted to be able to reach the level where he, he there will be a mitzvah to make him wealthy. He wanted to become the Gaver Rabba. Under far is in them follow the Gemaklan and Terik Tzabanashiris, and therefore Rabbi Yaisi was allowed. At this point, to learn for the sake of Ashiris, we bowed as mitzad zayin akeches nailim ba'ayve veter zayin agod la davis matzuvin la ashrei. Because you already possessed the incredible strengths that one would need, that in the future he, he, he could become a gavre rabbe, which there will be a mitzvah to be to make him wealthy. So in the toich. On the inside of his desire to be wealthy was his real desire to reach the point where he's going to be a gavre rabbe. So the Baskil is saying to Rabbi to Rabbi Abba, look beneath the surface. Yes, he's asking for wealth. But mitoich shaloy lishma ba lishma. Within that desire is the desire to become a Gavra Rabba. And he already now has those kaiches to become a Gavra Rabba. And therefore, the desire that he has to become wealthy is actually coming from his neshama, which the neshama wants it for a good reason. A permissible reason. And therefore, there's no need to punish him. So this is the story uh, now understood on a whole nother level. Initially, the Abba, the Abba offered Ashiras. He was referring to the Ashiras that's going to come from Shamayim. Came to Yaisi and said, I want, I want Teda. I want to learn Teda. I want Ashiras. The Yaisi, the Abba figured he wants, he's going to expect this Chayr to come on Ashamayim, which is Takash Lilishma, but it's okay. Then after a while passed, he came to the Yaisi and says, Oh no, Utra, where is my wealth? And he says, Oh no. It's, he's not expecting it min Hashemayim. He wants me to pay for it. This is, and he wants Ashiris. This is the kind of thing that is not allowed. He's using Kisra Shaltera to for his own personal gain. And therefore he wanted a daven for him. Then it should be Nakam and Oil, it be removed from the world. Comes the Baskel and says, No, Rab Yesi, no, Rab Abba, don't rush to judgment. Within this desire for Ashiris, there's a deeper desire to become a Gavra Rabba. And therefore, because the, because of that deeper desire, it was permissible for him to have even the external desire of Ashiris because it was really only an outcome of the toich of the deeper desire. Oh. Now we have to go back to understand, uh, to continue what happened with the Casa de Paz with the Golden Goblet. He basically gave it back to the original uh, a person who gave it to him as a gift. And then from that point on, he was named Rabbi Yaisi ben Pazi. We'll understand now why he returned the goblet and why he was called Rabbi Yaisi ben Pazi. The fact that there is an obligation upon the people to provide for and even make wealthy the leader of the generation is Kamuva Nitpail by him because Shalom King Hergish from Gaiva Kaitzabaz said obviously it's not going to affect him to have a feeling of haughtiness or something like that. Adirabe vile at his dear God Amiti was hot and some bitl to Mabishtan because he is truly a great person with a true bitl tashem Dafki der Faris er der was hot and kayach some varas in the Shiris. He actually has the ability to elevate the wealth. Well, by him is the Ashiris covered Shamayim because by he, he sees the wealth as a tool to increase the covet of the Abishtar. So, yeah, this is a very important. That we have to understand 
that when it comes to Agadol Adair, Ashiris is not a stira. On the contrary, Ashiris is just a way to increase Kavit Shemayim. So technically speaking, there is no issue. There's no problem with a Godel Adar being an Oisher, being, being uh, materially wealthy, because as, as the person that he is, he, as the Godel, uh, he is able to elevate that, holy, that, that wealth to holiness, to utilize it for Kveit Shemayim. And this is the explanation in the story. When he gave it back, he didn't mean to retroactively he went to, to retroactively take away the merits of the poor, of the rich person that was supporting him until this point. Does This cannot be done once once he acquired those merits. They're his canal, as he mentioned in the beginning of the sicha. The way I understand what the Rebbe is saying here is, and I, I might be wrong, but this is how I understand it. This, this golden goblet represented It represented learning for wealth. So Rabbi Yaisi gave it back. He said, this is a symbol of Shalei Lishma. And he wanted to impress upon the people of uh, around him especially as he was going to become a Gavra Rabbah and he would have that level of influence, he wanted, to, he wanted to impress upon them how important it is, the Limud Lishma. So he said, I'm giving back this, this goblet. This goblet represents everything that I now understand was wrong of me. The number is not Yusuf, but nevertheless, they called him Ben Pazi, but, but as a compliment. The name is Highlights the following. Number one in the parentheses. Noisif al shemaskir shal achre shanasa apoz shaloi pazi hechzire. First of all, we were saying in the beginning of the sicha, it reminds everyone that he initially was learning for the gold. So the Rebbe says, no. By calling it pazi, my gold, it says that despite the fact that it was already his, he gave it back. It always reminds him and everybody that he had this incredible, expensive goblet and he gave it away. Reminding everyone how important it is to learn Lishma and only Lishma. But there's another deeper message in the name Ben Pazi. Adi Maile Gdele Fun Rabiesi says a Gavarabba. It highlights the fact that Rabiesi is a Gavarabba. In other words, the Baskil says to the Baba that I don't punish him, he's going to be a Gavarabba. Ben Pazi is saying the fact that he's a Gavarabba. Gavra, if he's just a Gavra, even though it, it, it represents the fact that he's a strong person, as strong as a Gavra might be, it still doesn't have the power to transform wealth and, and, and to elevate it that it should be used only lishma for the sake of Hashem. Rabbi Yaisi Abba Zayindik a Gavra Rabba, but Rabbi Yaisi because he wasn't just a Gavra, he was a Gavra Rabba, he was a great Gavra. Atik Ken Zayin Ben Pazi, Al Derech Aloshen Ben Chayrin, he was able to be, uh, ben Chayrin means that he, be, that, that, not the son of freedom, but he was a free person, he was a person that owned the gold, so to speak, Mahapich Zayin Den Paz, Pause. As a verb, the bias, the gamri of him. Pause. He transforms it that he could become a total owner of it. As verb, pause. And as mahapech sign in yinashir in yinashir to lishma, he transforms the wealth to lishma. So, when it came to the goblet, this way I'm understanding it. Or, uh, I'll present it in two ways. When it came to the goblet, which was a symbol of Shalai Lishma, he gave it back as a message to tell everyone the importance of learning the Shema. But nevertheless, they named him Ben Pazi to highlight the fact that he was a person that was able to, to, to elevate Ashiras. That there is a concept where you could be where you could make someone wealthy and that could be elevated and used Lishem Shemaim. Another way that another Pshat that might be is, is that uh, he, he wasn't yet a Gavar Rabba. So therefore he had to get rid of the of the Casa de Pazi, he had to get rid of the goblet. But ultimately. Ultimately, he became a Gavar Rabba, and therefore they, they, they named him Ben Pazi once he became a Gavar Rabba and he was able to elevate the gold. 
So that, that would be the difference between the, 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 the past, the, the, giving back the Kablet versus the, versus the, um, from this point and on, he's being called Ben Pazi as he, once he gave, gave away the goblet, that made him a Gavre Rabbah, that showed that, 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 that his intention was the Shem Shamayim, and therefore from this point and on, he is able to learn, uh, he's able to elevate the goal, the, the, the goal, the Ashiris, the Shem Shamayim. So this, with this, we now conclude the understanding of the story. Of the story in the Zayar. Now in Sif Yudal, we're going to conclude the Sicha with applying this same idea to Avraham Avinu, which in truth we already alluded to in the Vagad Lashmecha earlier on. And we could use the same concept to explain what Abraham tells Avraham Avinu: Your reward is great. Even though the fact, even though Avraham wasn't even Miava, he served Hashem from love, and therefore there was no need for any person, for any schar, for any personal gain. Because, on the contrary, the fact that he's an Oyvind Me'ava, that in itself tells us that the schar is great. The fire of Avram is given an Oyvind Me'ava, because Avram served Hashem from love with, in, 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 a, in a total, in a complete way. Therefore, when he receives schar, it's not for his own gain, but it's for the Abishter's gain. Or it's for his avodas Hashem. But other rabbe, davke der mitvas that Abish taught him gezak schar chav meid because Hashem told him that your reward is very great. Ver taruis ki brach the emes agados from Avraham Avinu. This highlight from avodas Avraham. This highlights the greatness of Avraham's avoda. As it is avazefil came it sees nitpeni asmi that he's so much not a. a a significant person in his own eyes. That even the reward is not a contradiction to serving Hashem. On the contrary, he uses it to serve Hashem. Because the greatness of his reward is not his own greatness. It's the Gdullah of the Ebishter. So once we understand that the Ebed Lishma, the person who serves Hashem Lishma, even in even even the schar, even the ashiris is a tool for the greatness of Hashem. The same thing happens by Avraham Avinu. He was an Avid Meyava. He served Hashem solely out of love with no personal gains for himself. And therefore the schar that he was being given was actually being given as a tool to make Hashem greater. When Hashem says, He's telling him, you, you have reached Shleim Asavei Avram was worried about his Avaid. And... Uh, and Hashem tells him, you have reached Shlemus Avedasi, which is why Shkhar Chahar B'miyayid. Your Shkhar is great. In this Shkhar itself, you see that everything that Avram was getting or doing was the Shem Shemayim. And that is the ultimate demonstration of Avram's Avedah.